before we get right into the episode, shout out to Tayrock for supporting the channel. In my opinion, they make some of the best watches I've seen for the price. And if you want to check them out, the link will be in the description. You can use code challenge to save yourself an extra 20% off. All right, so we just retrieved all of our stuff after dying in the last episode. We're going to go ahead and bank everything we don't need. We have 20 anchovies that we fished and cooked. They're going to be used for anchovy pizzas later on. Having a looting bag at all times in the wilderness is very important because you pretty much have a second inventory. So what we're going to be doing is going back and retrieving the looting bag. This is going to be the official spot I get all my looting bags, I think, because there's level 1 rats and it's just so easy to land at 1 in 30 when you're killing rats in one hit. Always nice to see on the ground. There it is, the looting bag. As you guys can see, we've picked up a bunch of bones. Now the rats don't drop them, but they spawn right here, so might as well pick them up while I'm at it. All right, so this is the safest fishing spot in this area. Reason being is because if it's right here, all the way near the bandits, they will aggro me, and I'll most likely get wrecked because I'm you know, pretty AFK in this spot. But yeah, plan right now, cook some anchovies and get them banked. We're grinding for 35 cooking, so we can finally make ourselves pizzas and have some decent food. It's not the fastest method, but this is like the only way to get 35 cooking. The fishing is getting quite quick at level 22, and we are pretty much cooking every anchovy slash shrimp in our inventory, so it is going to be quite consistent. Rumor has it if you scald, the bandits are not aggressive, so when we come back and bank these anchovies, we're going to test that theory. Alright, now that we're done, all the anchovies going to put them in the bank. These are going to sit there for quite a while because until we're 55 cooking, we will not be able to make anchovy pizzas. If you talk to the emblem trader, he can actually give you a Peking skull and it lasts 20 minutes. I'm gonna use this to test the theory of the bandits not being aggressive. All right, moment of truth. Wow, okay, I got baited. They're still aggressive, rip. Wait, what? I swear they were de aggroed in that area. All right, it's okay, it's not really a big deal. Deaths at these early stages are not really gonna affect me. Because we're eventually going to load up on pizzas, once we hit that 35 cooking, I am just going to kill these rats to quickly reclaim the looting bag. But a bing, but a boom. Look boys, it's a fellow brother. I said hi, but I guess he truly does stand alone. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're oh my god, that other Iron Man is going to die, but there was a level 22 there with a fire strike. Very risky. Get your grats ready in the chat, boys. There it is, 35 cooking, finally. This is huge, like this is actually huge. 35 cooking allows us to make a normal pizza which heals 14 because there is a cheese and a tomato right on this table. Plus, since you can buy the pizza base from the NPC right beside me, you can simply just make a pizza because there's a cooking range right here. Gives 143 cooking EXP, nice. So this is how we're gonna get 55 cooking, I imagine. The only problem is that we can only make one per world. As you guys can see, once we get 55, we're gonna get anchovy pizzas and they heal 18. So that's gonna be something to look forward to. Now it is actually possible to get sharks through rogue chests, although you do need 84 thieving. I thought thieving was impossible, but someone pointed out there's actually a man located inside the Anku Cemetery, which means that training thieving is possible to 84, but it is going to be quite the grind. The plan for now is to get a bunch of food, so we're going to fill up our looting bag and our entire inventories with pizzas. This is going to be around 40 plus world hops since it is one pizza per world, and we are going to burn many, so it's going to be a lot more than just 40 world hops. No way, dude, the last seven in a row have been burnt pizzas, and I just accidentally ate half of one. Great. The one bad thing about hopping worlds is you get this screen that says too many login attempts. It's basically something that happens when you switch worlds too many times. You get 15 world hops in a certain amount of time. So when we get this screen, I'm probably just going to go do some fishing right beside me just to stall some time. Finally done the pizza grind. The looting bag is like 70% full. Now that we have some decent food, the next big milestone is going to be getting that 44 prayer. Now there are a couple different methods I can take for prayer. One, I could simply just go to an area with a lot of bone spawns and simply bury all the bones in that area. The second method is getting big bones from the boneyard, noting them up in the bank, and then going to the chaos temple, and then you can use them on the altar and they give 100 EXP each time. The third method is killing a lava dragons and burying their bones for 340 EXP apiece. This is the method I'm going to do, even though it is the most dangerous method, it does get us early magic levels, and they have a lot of useful drops on the drop table. 
Now to kill Lava Dragons, we're going to need runes, and to get runes, we're going to need money. So we're going to have to go loot Steel Plate Bodies. This is actually a really, really good way of making cash because every Steel Plate Body sells for 1.2k at the Bandit General Store. Now I could just loot runes from the Dark Warriors Fortress, but I'd rather just buy them from the Mage Bank Shop. It's actually a lot faster as well. Oh, there's an Iron Fulham on the ground here. Definitely going to take that. Don't even have any armor currently, so it's a pretty nice upgrade from nothing. And this area is just filled with good stuff. Staff of Earth coming in. To be honest, I would prefer a fire or air staff, but we will get those in the future as well. There it is on the ground, steel plate body. We have to make sure we don't get banged by the demons. It's actually really easy to loot these because one of the demons that spawns beside them sits pretty far away. But yeah, we're going to have to do round 35 plus world hops. Not going to sacrifice any pizza here. As you guys can see, 1.2k high alc value. That is what the store is going to buy them at. So let's fill up our looting bag and our inventory and then get the hell out of here. Hopefully we don't get PK'd. It's a really popular spot to make money, so wish us luck. All right, a ton of attempting to log in screens later. We have all the steel plate bodies in our inventory and looting bag. There's also this gold necklace that spawns right west of me, if you can see the red dot on the minimap. I've only picked up one because I don't even have a necklace on currently. We pretty much won't be having an amulet until we're able to kill Crazy Archaeologist, which we will do actually once we have overhead and once our mage level is decent. Then we can unlock the power amulet, which is something this boss drops, as well as the rune crossbow and the red dehyde body, which are both best in slots before we're able to unlock the crossbow, of course. The rune crossbow is going to be our main range weapon, and I'm so excited to start this boss, but we are going to have to get the prerequisites first. Okay, so we're walking to Mage Bank so we can note all these steel plates, and I didn't even realize there was a gate over here. I went all the way around, as you guys can see on the map, all the way around to the east here, and didn't even know there was a gate that would have saved me so much time. First time we've stepped foot in the Mage Bank. This is going to be somewhere that we come very, very often. We're going to get the God Cape here, and as you guys can see, we have a bank right here, and a rune shop right beside the bank very very nice they have nature runes law runes cosmics everything we basically need but of course to utilize the shop we are gonna need to go sell all these off to the bandit shop so let's head our way over there a hey, okay okay not today we're just gonna hop world since i'm here i might as well just pick up this knife it spawns right here beside the webs could come in handy if i'm using a staff and i do need to slash web so it's a pretty good item to pick up pretty sure you can just buy it from the general store anyways but if you can't, I am a genius. The Wilderness Obelisks, something that's gonna come in super handy for traversing around the wilderness because we can go to so many different destinations, although we do not have the diary. So we will get teleported to a random one, but right now we are just trying to get one close enough to the bandit camp so we do not have to walk all the way down there. That's what I'm talking about. Second try, we got one. It's not the closest, but it's better than walking 25 wilderness levels. So 1.2k per steel plate body, the next one goes for 1.14, and then 1080, and then 1020. So we're going to be selling 4 per world, I think it seems fair enough. This shop is going to be used a lot before I get high alchemy. For high alchemy I am going to need 55 mage and nature runes, so anytime I get like a rune drop for example, I can just come to this shop and sell it for the best value. I want to steer away from methods that involve world hopping as soon as possible just because it is so time consuming and you're not really gaining exp when you're just hopping worlds all the time all right this is the last world hop all the steel plate bodies are gone we sold off the gold necklace 48.3k cash that is actually insane like i did not expect this to get that much cash the wilderness just seems to be a very good area to obtain cash because there's so many drops that are alkables but yeah since i'm already here I'm going to do one more stock up of pizzas just because I'm already here because I'm going to have to come back if I ever want more. So they'll just be for future use. All right. So since we have all the supplies to be able to go out and basically boss next time around, I'm going to cut this episode off here and tell you what my goals for the next one are. Camp the Lava Dragons for 44 prayers so we get overheads. They also drop a bunch of useful items. Then we're going to head over with those overheads and test our luck at the Crazy Archaeology. Also might do some Wilderness Slayer. Really want to get those combat stats up. But yeah, until next time, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for all the support on the first episode. Next episode's going to be absolutely amazing. I hope you guys look forward to it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.